We are on the video record. This is the 15th day of September 2014. Time is approximately 9.50 a.m. This is the videotape deposition of Martin O'Boyle in the matter of O'Boyle versus the town of Gulfstream. This deposition is being held at 224 Detour Street, Suite 1405, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33401. My name is Jason Peterson, and I'm the videographer representing Leo Graphic Work. At this time, would the attorneys please announce their appearances for the record? <coughs> plaintiffs. Nick Taylor here for the plaintiff. Dan D'Souza on behalf of the plaintiff. Culver Smith represent uh, Jonathan O'Boyle, William Ring, and the O'Boyle law firm. And then I believe Mr. Ring is also here. He's, he's a counsel. Is he appearing on his own behalf or just as a party? He's a party to your motion. He's okay. a party to your motion. I'm Robert Sweetapple on behalf of the town of Gulfstream. With me is Joanne O'Connor of Jones and Foster. Mayor Morgan is also uh, in the deposition room. And Mr. Thrasher. And Mr. Thrasher is here as well. Mr. O'Boyle, I need you to raise your right hand, please. I affirm to tell the truth. Would you please state your name, sir? Martin E. O'Boyle. And Mr. O'Boyle, uh, what is your business address? 1280 West Newport Center Drive, Deerfield Beach, Florida. All right, and is that an office building or what type of premise is that? I would uh, call it a flex building. Flex building, all right. And how are you currently employed? I guess I'm not employed. Okay. And are you uh, associated with any entities for whom you perform services? Yes. Okay. And what, what uh, and are those services that you're remunerated for or not remunerated for? You want to know if I receive any remuneration? Right. You say you're not employed. Are you working for compensation or for profit in any activities currently? Um, I don't know how to answer your question. Right. Are there any, let me, let me break it down for you this way. And before I do, I notice that you have a gentleman who is uh, videotaping us. Uh, who is that gentleman that I'm looking at uh, there? Um, if you're looking at Doug Stacy, it's Doug Stacy. All right, and who is Mr. Stacy? He's a man. I understand, is he in your employ in any, uh, directly or indirectly? No. Does he work for any entity that you have an interest in? No. Uh, do you know why he's here? Oh uh, yes, to videotape. And who asked him to be here? I did. You did. And uh, is he here as a volunteer? He works without compensation. Um. You know, I don't know. I never asked. Okay. You don't know if he's working for you as an investigator and being compensated. I don't think he's working for me as an investigator. Has he ever worked for you in any capacity? He's done things for me, yes. And has he ever worked for any of your entities, any entity in which you have an interest? I think he's done things for entities that I have an interest. And has he been compensated in the past by you or any entity in which you have an interest for any services he's provided? Not that I know of. Okay, so he's, he's never received any compensation at all for any of his, his work that uh, has involved you or your companies, is that correct? Objection form. I, I don't know. You don't know or he hasn't? I don't know. Okay. Who would know that? Would Ms. Martini know whether or not uh, Mr. Stacy's been receiving money from any of your entities? She may. Okay. And how do you communicate with Mr. Stacy? Uh, by email? By text? Uh, verbally? Verbally. All right. Do you ever e communicate with him by email? I don't think so. All right. How about by text? I don't think so. All right, and he has come with you to City Hall in the past, has he not? I don't think so. Has he ever been with you uh, and performed filming at City Hall? I don't think he's ever been to City Hall. Okay, Town Hall and Gulfstream. I don't think so. Okay. Oh, oh wait a second. Um, he may have. 
Yeah. You say might have. That's the second time you've said that. Have you ever had your deposition taken before, Mr. I Wolf? have. All right. How many times? I would say more than five. Okay. More than ten or less than ten? I would say less than ten. Okay. Uh, I presume you've been told the normal uh, advice at the commencement of a deposition, but I'll go ahead and repeat those just in case. I'm looking for your personal knowledge uh, based on uh, any facts that you're aware of personally, not your opinions. Uh, you understand that, don't you? Do you understand that? You only want facts. Right. You've written that down, I see. Yes. Okay. And have you ever been told that previously when you've been deposed? Never. Okay. And I'm not looking for your opinions. Is that understood? I wrote uh, not opinion, okay. one facts. Right. And uh, I'm not looking for you to speculate or guess. So if you don't know the answer to a question, uh, please just tell me you don't know the answer. Don't tell me might be, maybe, or guess. Is that understood? Is that understood, sir? I think so. Okay, I see you're writing down uh, some of the things that I'm uh, pointing out to you. Is that your practice in depositions to write down things that the lawyer questioning you says in addition to videotaping it? Um, I, I try to understand it and um, the best way to do it is to sometimes have it in front of you. Okay. What, what is your educational background, sir? I went to the 11th grade. Okay. Did you, you didn't go to the 12th grade? No. Um, I thought you dropped out of high school in the 12th grade according to the materials you've disseminated to people in the town of Gulfstream. Um, I finished the 11th grade. Okay. At what school did you finish the 11th grade? Uh, Collingswood High School. Right. And what year did you finish the 11th grade? I think 68. Right. And did you pass the 11th grade? Yes. Okay. And you never started in 12th grade, is that correct? That's wrong. Did you start 12th grade? Yes, I did. Okay. And how far into 12th grade did you go? Uh, all but six weeks. Okay. You can read and write, correct? Y yes, I can read and write. Okay. Are you capable of answering my questions without writing uh, every time I say something? I'm not sure. Okay. Do you realize that if you proceed to write uh, uh, notes to yourself during this deposition, that will prolong this process? Take longer and do it right. That's the way, exact way I feel. I just want to make sure we're on the same page on that. When I walked in the room, Mr. O'Boyle, I saw a picture of a Airstream trailer and it says Sweet Apples Beach. I'm sure it's in the videotape. If I step back here, I'll move the I'll move this box of my materials that I'll be questioning about. Did you bring that with you here today? I did. Okay. And did your attorneys see you bring that into this deposition? No. Okay. And why did you bring that to this deposition? Um, because I think it fits in the overall scheme of what you're uh, going to ask. Okay. All right. So you, you have anticipated what my questions are here today? I didn't say that. Okay. Um, and uh, with regard to, let's go back now with regard to my questioning of you. Uh, if I do ask you something that you don't understand, uh, what I'd like you to do is to uh, wait till I conclude my question and then tell me you don't <coughs> understand and I'll rephrase it. Is that, is that fair, Mr. O'Boyle?
Um, I assume um, when you say wait for him to finish, that's if I don't understand it. Um, no, you should wait for me to finish whether you understand or don't understand. Is that fair, Mr. O'Boyle? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. and by the same token, I should wait for you to finish and I'll endeavor to do so. Is there any reason you're unable to give a deposition here today, Mr. O'Boyle? I don't feel too good, but besides that... Are you under uh, doctor's care for any physical or mental impairments? Um, I don't know that I want to go into the um, doctor-patient um, okay. Is there any privilege. reason that you cannot uh, give uh, testimony here today that you're unable to recall or to testify truthfully? Well, I'm pretty sure that I can truth truthfully testify to the best of my ability. And uh, you said you're not feeling well. Uh, if at any point you need to take a break in this deposition, please let me know and I will accommodate you. Is that fair? Um, yes. Okay, good. Now, getting back to depositions, please tell me each time that you recall having uh, been deposed in a case. If you could do it in chronological order, that would be helpful. When I say you, sir, I mean you individually or you in any representative capacity. Well, I can remember uh, three of them. Uh, the most recent was a case called Campbell, and I would say it was within the last four to six months. Um, another one was with Longport, New Jersey, probably around the same period. And another one with a gentleman named Eisen, and that was years ago. They're the three I can remember. Okay. You can't remember any other cases no. that you've testified in? I can't. Okay, that's in deposition. What about testifying in a proceeding in court? How often have you testified in a court proceeding, either individually or in a representative capacity? <coughs> I testified before Judge Middlebrooks a year or two ago. Any other cases? I can't think of any. Okay. Now the Campbell case, where was that case? New Jersey. Okay. And were you individually a party? Yes. Were you a plaintiff or a defendant? Plaintiff. Okay. And you, you, when was that case filed? Um, after Hurricane Sandy. All right. And what was the nature of the claims you brought? Um, he was hired to protect my home and my home was not protected, but there were plenty of empty liquor bottles and girls running around. Okay, and did you uh, go to trial in that case? No. Did you settle the case? No. Is the case still pending? Yes. Okay. And you were deposed, you say, approximately four to six months ago? I think so. Okay. Now, in Longport, New Jersey, you didn't give me the style of a case that you testified in. Do you remember the style of the case you testified in? I think it's O'Boyle versus Longport, but I think that's what it is. Okay. And is that the only case that was pending uh, in New Jersey at that time, or did you have other lawsuits that you brought in New Jersey in addition to that case? Objection form. Strike that. I'll rephrase it. 
were you, you were the plaintiff, obviously, in Oboil versus Longcourt, right? Yes. Okay. Were you a party to any other cases uh, in New Jersey during the past five years? Uh, the Eisen case, which I told you about, but that may have been longer than five years ago. And there were two Oprah cases. That's a public records request case? It, well, it's called um, Open Public Records. That you were the plaintiff in? I'm not sure. Okay. Did you, and you didn't testify in those cases? I did not. Any other cases that you brought in New Jersey in the last five years? Not that I know of. Okay, and the Eisen case uh, is a case that you brought against an individual for defamation? Yes. Okay, and you testified in that case? No. You didn't testify at deposition in that case? Oh, deposition, yes. Okay, what about at trial? It didn't, never went to trial. Okay, and um, are there any other uh, cases that, that you can recall that you have testified in, either in deposition or trial? No. So as you sit here today, there's only four times that you can remember testifying? As I sit here right now, mm -hmm. I've told you what I remember. Okay. Now, can you tell me uh, how many lawsuits have you been involved in, either individually or in a representative capacity? I don't know what your question is. How many lawsuits have you either individually brought as a plaintiff or brought in a representative capacity on behalf of some entity in which you are associated or have you been sued either individually or in a representative capacity in the last uh, five years? I think I've answered the last five years. Okay. What about the last seven years? I, I, I I'd be guessing. Okay. Um, have you ever been involved in any litigation in Tennessee? Yes. Okay. And can you tell me, uh, were you a plaintiff or a defendant? How many cases were you involved in in Tennessee? I don't know. Uh, were you involved in more than one case in Tennessee? I don't know. Uh, were you a plaintiff or a defendant in a case in Tennessee? Of the case I'm thinking of, plaintiff. And what case are you thinking of? Uh, it was New Midland Plaza Associates versus Core States Bank. Okay, and what was the nature of that case? It was a lender liability case. Okay, and you were a named plaintiff in the case? No. And your wife was a named plaintiff in the case? No. Okay, who do you believe are the named plaintiffs in the case? New Midland Plaza Associates. Okay, and what uh, court was that case in? Um, I think it was uh, Blunt County State Court. But it may have been the federal court. I, I don't remember, but I think it was Blount County. Well, you litigated in Tennessee in both the state court and the federal court, didn't you, Mr. O'Boyle? Uh, yes. Okay. In fact, you sued a law firm in federal court, didn't you? Yes. Right. And in whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, I didn't. I think New Midland Plaza Associates sued a law firm in the federal court. You don't think you were a named plaintiff? I don't think I was a named plaintiff, no. And uh, you, you, uh, the entity uh, was New Midland, you said? Mm hmm And that's yes? Yes, it is. And one of the other uh, admonitions I didn't give you might uh, try to remember is, please try to answer yes or no where you're attempting to do so and don't say uh-huh or uh-uh. Is that understood?
Yes. Okay. What was your relationship with New Midland? I was a partner. Okay. And the a suit that you filed that you called a lender liability case, how long did that case, was that case pending? Seems forever. Right. Was it pending for approximately seven years? Um, I don't think it was that long. Okay. Uh, do you remember a case by the name of Martin E. O'Boyle, John E. O'Boyle, Catherine O'Boyle, Commerce Partnership number 1147 and Commerce Partnership number 1171 versus First Union National Bank at Al. It was a Blunt Kenny case. That's the one I just told you about. Okay, but I thought you told me the plaintiff's name was New Midland. I did. Okay, wasn't the actual plaintiff's name Martin E. O'Boyle, John E. O'Boyle, Catherine O'Boyle, just as I read to you? No, I don't believe so. It wasn't. Okay. And uh, in that litigation, um, you were sanctioned personally on multiple occasions, were you not? Um, I don't think so. Okay, and you were also held in contempt, were you not? Uh, I'd have to say it. I'd, I'd have to say it. Let me show you an affidavit that was uh, filed by the uh, judge in that case, W. Dale Young. Young. I'm marking it as uh, Defendant's Exhibit 1, and I'm going to ask if you've ever seen this document. Any Bob, Let me show it to your counsel first. And Bob, I don't mean to interrupt, but I'm not really sure how this has any relevance to your motion for sanctions or the merits of this case. I mean, if you want to explain to me how going through litigation from 2006 has some bearing to a public records lawsuit that was filed in 2014. I'm all ears. But I've been letting you go for a while on this, and I'm not sure I'm going to let you go much further. Well, I'm not here to uh, educate you, and I'm certainly not here to tell you that the standard of deposition is certainly not relevance. Um, and I'm I'm planning on taking this deposition, and uh, I would appreciate it if you just don't make any speaking objections. And if you have an objection, please make it on the record. Bob, I'm giving you a chance. Before I start instructing Mr. O'Boyle not to answer questions that have nothing to do with this case, I'm giving you a chance to explain to me why I shouldn't do that. Well, you shouldn't do that because the law precludes it, and I'll be moving for sanctions against you and Mr. O'Boyle if you do it. Bob, I can't stop you from doing what you're going to do. I'm going to take full discovery, counsel. Full discovery of what? I, mean, I, I don't want to be here at 10 p.m. tonight, Bob, as we're going through stuff from 10 years ago because you feel like harassing the witness. So I'm asking you to actually ask some questions about this case. This, this case is going to involve additional defenses. I'm taking discovery with regard to counterclaims that arise from this case uh, and other claims that arise from Mr. Boyd's actions in this case. And this is directly uh, going to be very relevant when you uh, get through with the questions I have for you today. You may know a lot more uh, than you know now, counsel. So just bear with me. I think you'll become very educated as this litigation proceeds. Thank you for that, Bob. Mr. O'Boyle, uh, looking at Exhibit 1, does that refresh your recollection as to litigation you were involved in in Tennessee personally? Again, 
is that document that I've handed you um, refresh your recollection as to litigation that you were personally involved in in Tennessee? Well, the affidavit it, uh, at the beginning of it is bogus. The exhibit one. Pardon? The mic fell off. Again. Does that document refresh your recollection as to whether or not you were a plaintiff in litigation in Tennessee? The affidavit is, I don't believe, is a valid affidavit, and um, so it does nothing for me. Okay. So as you sit here, do you recall being a plaintiff in litigation in Tennessee? Yes, um, I already, um, uh, the, the styling of the case was New Midland Plaza Associates uh, it versus, it went from Core States Bank to another bank to another bank to, I think it ended up at First Union Bank. Um, this document shows two, New Midland Plaza Associates versus Core States. And this is a memorandum from the judge, dated November 2nd, 2006. And are you aware whether or not any court in Tennessee stated, quote, the court finds that O'Boyle's intent, purpose, and strategy in pursuing his claims was to conduct this litigation in a manner which had the maximum financial impact on defendants. The purpose and strategy manifest itself in O'Boyle's repeatedly making arguments and taking positions irrespective of their merits that would maximize the inconvenience and cost to defendants. Do you recall ever seeing that in any order uh, written by a judge in Tennessee with reference to you personally? Just, just so it's, uh, I don't know what the judge means by that, but uh, just so it's clear, I never appeared before this judge one time. I never testified before this judge one time. So I don't know exactly what he means. Now as an example, when we look at your testimony before Judge uh, Olson, it has, um, I think, much worse um, uh, uh, statements. But, um, excuse me, what testimony before Judge Olson are you referring to? I don't think I've ever testified before Judge Olson. Uh, well, let me give it to you. You're, talk about, you're talking about a motion I filed? Okay, motion, motion, okay. whatever. I don't know what it was. Okay. Are you talking about a motion to recuse I filed? Uh, I don't know. Would you yeah. like me to get it for you? Sure, why don't you get it? Yeah, yeah. glad to. This is going to be hard. What's that? Stay on the record. Yeah. Could you also get a picture of uh, this sign, if you don't mind? I'll move the box. Yes. I'd like. I'd like uh, the sign that Mr. O'Boyle wrote at his deposition. Hello. You step back. Chris. Hi. Huh? Uh, just one, one, one second, please. Uh, I'm up here and I really can't talk to you. Sorry.
So you're likening your put your mic on that. So I understand you, Mr. O'Boyle, you're likening um, the court's statement. likening uh, your sanctions that were entered against you in Tennessee to a motion I filed. Is that your position, Mr. O'Boyle? I'll answer you in just a, just a moment. Um, I didn't find, I have it here by the way, but I didn't find, I didn't hit, I should say, uh, Judge Olson's um, uh, statements. Um, however, um, what I did find, which you I guess was a found, head. You personally found? What did you say? I said you found something. You personally found something? Yeah, I just found it. It was right there. Okay, but did you or the ones that, that did the research to find these documents, or you had someone else do that? I had someone else do it. Okay. And who was that? I think it was a couple people who've done that. And who would that, who would those people be? I think one of them was a young lady um, that works with me named Kelly Hunk Hunk Hunky, and the other one I don't remember. And are these lawyers that have the ability to research uh, cases and uh, documents, or were these just secretaries? These were lawyers. Lawyers, okay, good. So tell me, tell me, uh, why you think something that I filed in a case uh, is the same or relates in any way to a court in Tennessee finding you personally in contempt? Well, this or, is... I'm sorry? I'm all ears, Mr. O'Boyle, please. Um, this is a case titled John W. Temple versus Robert A. Sweetapple Esquire and Robert A. Sweetapple PA. You were talking about Judge Olson. I just, you weren't listening. I answered that I haven't come to Judge Olson, but I just saw this, and this has things that may be more, that may be closer. That's what I said. You You're talking about a complaint that was filed by an opposing party in a divorce case against me, a complaint by a uh, opposing spouse in a divorce case. Uh, I don't know what it's, um, what kind of case it is. Mm -hmm. I can only read you the provisions that have been highlighted for me, such as Sweet Apple stated that he would drag out the litigation in this case for years if Temple did not agree to his demand the, to the demands of his client. And do you know what happened with that lawsuit? Uh, I do not know. Do you know if it was dismissed? Um, no, no, okay. I don't know if it let's, was dismissed. Let's go to, now, and you provided that. You provided that to Mayor Morgan, did you not? No. 
did anyone in your office send that or deliver that to the city, to the town of Gulfstream for purpose of putting in the uh, town records? Um, someone in my office, perhaps even myself, would have uh, sent it to Gulfstream to put into the town record where it belongs. Perhaps yourself or it was you, Mr. I Blair? don't know. You can't remember if you did that last week? No. Okay. Your memory is that faulty? I'm not going to answer that. Why can't you remember if you did it last week? I answered your question. Let's move on. Well, it happened last week. Do you know I who understand did it? that. Do you know who did it, Mr. Boyle? I've asked and answered three times now. Mr. Boyle, do you know who did it if it wasn't you? All right, you're bordering on harassing the witness now at this point. He's already said, I don't know, three or four times, Bob. Move on. Okay. Mr. Boyle, was this sent, from which office was this sent last week? I assume it would have been my office. What is my office? Uh, the one when you asked me up front where my office was, 1280 West Newport Center Drive. Is your memory that bad? Well, that's a building. Oh. Okay, it wasn't sent from a building. It was sent from some entity, I take it. Oh, I have no idea then. Okay, which, what entities occupy that building, Mr. O'Boyle? Um, there's about 100 of them. 100 entities? Yeah. And they're all tenants in that building? Pardon? They're all tenants in that building? Um, they have the right to be there. Uh, and are these uh, companies and LLCs that occupy the building? Uh, and then some. Okay. Are you affiliated with all of those entities? Probably not. Okay. How many of those entities are you affiliated I with? I don't know. And which entity do you understand sent uh, materials regarding me to the town of Gulfstream? I already answered that question. Which entity? Do you know which entity? I said I already answered the question. What was your answer? I don't remember that. My answer sir, was I don't know. Okay. And uh, was that done by correspondence? I answered that question. Did you have any communications with anyone regarding that topic? Shopping. The topic of sending documents regarding me to the town of Gulfstream. Did, no. you, did you talk to anyone in any of uh, the offices or any of the entities that occupy that building about that topic? No. Okay. And so what other uh, information uh, did you want to uh, remark that you believe uh, was similar to your being sanctioned and held in contempt by a judge in Tennessee on multiple occasions? I'm not judge sure. Not I don't understand your question. You indicated that I did. I testified or did something with Judge Olson that somehow was equivalent to uh, the sanctions that were entered against you in Tennessee. Is there a question pending? Yes, I'm waiting for him to tell me what it is he wanted to tell me. He had something he wanted to make a point about, and I'm letting him do so.
um, the case was Trafford Distributing versus Worley, and Mr. Sweetapple, you represented Worley. An expedited hearing was conducted on March, or I'm sorry, on August 26, 2010 at 1.30 p.m. August 26, 1.30, what year? 2010. Would you like a copy and that way you don't I'm have to well ask I'm well familiar me. with the case, Mr. O'Boyle. Okay, well then you shouldn't right. ask questions. At 1.30 p.m. I'd like it on the record, Mr. O'Boyle. Well, it's going right in. Yeah, but we need to put the dates in, the years in when we talk about dates. Okay. That's we normally do things. Okay. At 1.30 p.m. And movements, movements council argued that I should henceforth recuse myself from any proceeding in which Rudenbart, Ruden McCluskey represents a party. Because the case law interpreting 28 U.S.C. 455 consistently rejects this argument, I ruled from that bench that the motions would be denied and I would enter this formal written order detailing my assessment. Any strongly worded language in my orders or in the courtroom has resulted from astonishment at how the defendants have chosen to handle certain affairs over the past decade and particularly in the months preceding this bankruptcy filing. Rather they, rather they argue that his employment combined with my rulings against them are sufficient basis to engage in a fishing expedition. That the movements filed these motions in the face of such overwhelming case law on the subject is surprising. The cases go on and on, and just as I have a duty to sua sponte, recuse myself when a disqualifying factor comes to light, I also have a duty to retain a case when faced with a meritless recusal motion. And this is no joke. This is quite literally what the movements are asking for. Their misunderstanding of 455 was painfully betrayed at the August 26 hearing when Movens Council forcefully recused that or argued that I should recuse myself from any matter in which Rudin Barnett, Rudin Mark McCluskey represents a party, whether Movens Council did not adequately research the case law on this subject or simply did not digest it. I do know, I do not know, but fiery impassioned oral argument in the face of a glass mountain of precedent with no acknowledgement of that glass mountain and no hint at a good faith basis for a change in the law. This is normally sanctionable under P9011B. The only reason why sanctions are not warranted here despite this appalling lack of diligence is the layman perception rule. I further find that no well-informed, thoughtful, and objective observer would argue that a sitting federal judge should recuse himself from every matter in which his spouse's firm represents a party, so long as one, his spouse is not involved in the case, two, his spouse is not an equity partner in the firm, three, the guidelines imposed by Congress in 455B are otherwise followed. The motion to recuse judge filed by defendant Barbara Worley in adversary proceeding gives the proceeding 0801793-JKO is accordingly denied. And who did you have uh, research that case for you, Mr. O'Boyle? Uh, I told you um, Kelly and, uh, and I think one other person went up there with her, but I just don't remember. And did you ever become aware of the facts of that case? Um, I read the opinion. Okay, well, read did you did you did you follow what happened in that case, Mr. O'Boyle? Objection form. I read the opinion. That opinion. Yes. Uh, and are you suggesting that somehow? Uh, that opinion asserts that I have done something wrong? Uh, I'm asserting that that opinion says what it says. Okay. And are you aware that an appeal of the refusal of Judge Olson to recuse himself from that case was filed and argued uh, uh, and hearings were had before the Honorable Frederick Moreno 
the chief judge of the uh, Southern District of Florida? No. Okay. Uh, so your lawyer didn't look to see if there was an appeal filed of that order almost immediately after the recusal was denied? Objection. Your, your lawyer well, that you Hold on, Bob. Are you asking him about conversations with counsel? Because he's not going to answer those questions. I don't want to know what your counsel told you. But uh, you want him to tell you what his you're lawyer... You're making a speaking objection. Hold on, Bob. You want him to tell you what his lawyer did and... I'm afraid that's privileged. He's not going to answer that. So no, he's not going to answer those questions. First of all, there's no those questions pending. Uh, there's no question pending other than the one I asked. Second of all, you're making speaking objections again. The next time you do it, I will file a motion for sanctions against you. I don't you. care what Invoke you do, Bob. Privilege. Bob, don't I don't me. care what you do. If you, want to excuse, if you want to excuse the witness and then have a conversation so you don't have to sit here and complain about speaking objections or coaching or whatever, I'm happy to do that. Otherwise, let me finish, and then you ask your question. I've already put my statement on the record, counsel, as to, to how I'm not going to tolerate any more speaking And objections. what's your question? You have not made one legal objection on the record yet today. Mr. Bob, O'Boyle, you keep giving speeches, Mr. O'Boyle, are you, did you ever obtain from your attorneys a notice of appeal of that ruling by Judge Olson? You can answer yes or no. Um, if I did, I don't recall. Okay. Do you know what the underlying facts were that were alleged in that motion? Um, yeah, generally stated. Okay. Yeah. Do you realize that there were allegations that the uh, my opposing counsel during the course of a case hired the judge's uh, fiance who moved down and moved in with the judge uh, during that time period? Those were alleged in the motion. Do you recall that? Um, obviously, the judge was not very impressed with your argument. Okay. Well, are you aware that uh, Judge uh, Moreno made certain uh, statements on the record at a status conference immediately after that hearing, and Judge Olson thereafter, sua sponte, recused himself? Are you aware of that, sir? I am not, and I don't know what Judge Olson said. All I know is courts speak through orders. Okay, and are you aware that he immediately after that order entered an order recusing himself, sir? Uh, I am not aware of that, and I don't know why he did it. Maybe he was going on a trip around the world. I don't know. And are you, did you read the front page of the Daily Review that discussed this case in length and went over uh, the uh, facts of this case. I don't read the Daily Review. Okay. And are you aware there is a pending federal case now against the lawyer and uh, both lawyers that were involved in the allegations of that motion to recuse, sir? I don't think I am. I okay. might be. Okay. All right. Is there any other? Uh, tell tell me uh, why did you have? Uh, lawyers research me and why, my, my legal work. Why did you do an investigation on my son? Because he alleges to be your attorney in this proceeding and he alleges uh, to be a bona fide, to be part of a bona fide law firm and uh, whether or not you are represented by a bona fide law firm and have an entitlement to attorney's fees uh, is one of the issues in all of the cases that your lawyers have brought. And that's just one of the issues that you'll see relate to your alleged son's law firm or your so son's alleged law firm. The, let me just state the record on behalf of Jonathan O'Boyle that I do not believe that he alleges that he's counsel of record in this case. Oh, I don't think he does, but I think we're going to see that he has Certainly, uh, there, are, there are issues with regard to that very point and whether or not the O'Boyle Law Firm is a bona fide law firm that is entitled to obtain or seek attorney's fees. And I intend to take discovery with regard to that issue from this witness and other witnesses, as well as other issues with regard to that law firm that I believe are of very significant importance. Is this your opening or your closing statement, Bob? I'm not sure I've heard a question yet. It was my answer to your client's question, counsel. I was, oblig I was obligating myself to answer your client's question. And Mr. Uh, Mr. O'Boyle, so you investigated me um, 
because I have filed a motion. Uh, I filed a motion with regard to your son's law firm. No. Okay. Why did you uh, investigate me? Um, we didn't investigate you. Why did you have a lawyer look at? Uh, did you have a lawyer uh, research uh, me, my legal work? We had a lawyer um, doing some research up at the county building, and uh, I said, just for the hell of it. Um, I don't want to. I don't want you to testify about statements that you said to your lawyers. Okay. So if you can answer the question without revealing any sort of attorney-client communication, you can. Otherwise, I don't want you answering the question. Okay. So why did you uh, investigate me? I didn't. Okay. So it was just a coincidence that you found the uh, Judge Olson recusal uh, order? I didn't uh, find it. It's just a coincidence. You asked an attorney to strike that. Uh, an attorney provided that to you, correct? Um... Yes, uh, yes. And one of your lawyers was in the courthouse and learned a little bit about me, right? Is that what happened? Objection form. Um, I can't tell you uh, what happened. You can't. You don't know that. You don't know that one of your attorneys was in the courthouse and learned a little bit about me. Objection form. No. Okay. You've never stated that before. If I did, I stated it erroneously. You stated erroneously? Yeah. Okay. Let me show you the transcript of the city, of the town commission meeting, 61314 before Gulfstream. I'm marking it as Exhibit 2. If you could mark that, please. I have a copy for council. Uh, that's just the one. Does this transcript of this uh, document fairly uh, recite your statements made to the town council on 6-13-14? Um, I can't say. I'd have to look at a video to say. Okay. However, I did correct it at the next meeting. Okay. And you see where it says uh, exactly what I just put in the record and was objected to and you said it was erroneous. You said here. Let me read it to you exactly. We, uh, one of my lawyers was in the courthouse and learned a little bit about Mr. Sweetapple. I just asked you if that occurred or if you ever said that, and you said uh, no, that would be erroneous, right? Um, if that's what I said, then that's what I said. Okay. So you did say at the meeting that. Uh, one of your lawyers just happened to be in the courthouse and learned a little bit about me, right? No, no. You, that's what you said. Pardon? That's what you said. No, I'm reading to you from this document. I it's, understand that. Okay. The minutes uh, from this town, uh, they leave a lot to be desired. I don't know. All I know is that uh, the Judge Benton portion of it, I made an error, and of course, you have a mayor who will not let you um, ask questions. Um, uh, so what I did was the very next meeting, I went and I said what I said about Mr. Sweetapple, I erred. Well, I'm talking now about 
the fact that you said that there was an, a lawyer in the courthouse, one of your lawyers. What lawyer was in the courthouse that you're referring to here? I think, I'm, I'm not sure, but I think it was... Uh, I think it was Kelly Hunky. Okay. And then you said that he had a case in the First District Court of Appeals before Judge Benton. Uh, how did this lawyer locate the case that was in the First District of in Tallahassee uh, in the Palm Beach County Courthouse? If in answering that, you have to reveal conversations you had between you and this lawyer. Let me rephrase it for you. The courthouse you're referring to when you spoke before town council, was that the Palm Beach County Courthouse? I'm sorry? Was that the Palm Beach County Courthouse? The, it was what, the Palm Beach County Which court? courthouse did this lawyer go to where she just happened to learn a little bit about Mr. Sweetapple? And again, if the only way you know this is through conversations with counsel, well, then I need you to indicate that that's the only way you know it. Okay, that's the only way I know it. Yeah. That I'm instructing the witness not to answer. All right, let the record reflect that uh, Mr. O'Hare has uh, come into the, to the room. I don't know if he's staying for the deposition or not. Yes, there he is. So, were you attempting to communicate to the town council that your attorney had found the Benton case at the courthouse? Do, do you have any idea uh, how this alleged um, decision before Judge Benton was located from the first first district court of appeal? Can you answer yes or no? Again? Do you have any uh, knowledge as to how this case from Judge uh, re regarding Judge Benton was located? No. In the courthouse? No. Okay. And uh, you, stated, you stated to uh, my client that um, Judge Benton found that Mr. Sweet Apple consistently misrepresented testimony. Mm -hmm. uh, did you read this opinion before you made that statement? I told you I erred in what I said. Those words are in that opinion. Would you like me to read them for you? Mr. O'Boyle, I Would you like me to read them for you? Mr. O'Boyle. Would you like me to read them for you? I'm trying to ask you a question. Would you like me to read them for you? Mr. O'Boyle, I have a question I'm trying to ask you. And I'll, would you please read back the question I asked Mr. O'Boyle? I think it had to do with you reading, sir, not me. Well, please listen see. to the question. And you stated to my client that Judge Benton found that Mr. Sweetapple consistently misrepresented testimony. Did you read this opinion before you made that statement? I did not read the opinion in total. And then you said that, it all, that he also found that I failed to acknowledge well-established case law, including Supreme Court precedents. Did you read that uh, language regarding me before you uh, may uttered that statement? You're talking about the statement that I went back to the commission and said, I made the statement erroneously, I apologize, and here's correctly what it says. You're talking about that statement? Okay, I'm talking about the statement, sir, on 613.14. Okay, I don't where, know what statement you're making. I made a well, lot of statements. Well, you said today. that I failed to acknowledge well-established case law, including Supreme Court precedents. Um, did you read, did you strike that? Did you read any of Judge Benton's opinion before you went to the commission on uh, June 13, 2014? Or did you just uh, go in based on what someone told you? Objection for.
Can you answer that question? Did you read the opinion at all before you went into the commission meeting on 6-13-2014? Uh, yes or no, please, if you can answer it. Are you able to answer the question, yes or no, Mr. O'Boyle, as to whether or not you read Judge Benton's opinion before you attended the council meeting on June 13, certify that question, I'll just move on to the next area. I'll ask the court to bring Mr. O'Boyle back to ask any, answer I'm, any questions that he's uh, delaying and... and are you uh, suggesting that he's refusing to answer? I well, he's he's, he's, I've asked him if he can answer yes or no as to whether or not he's told me he didn't read it before he said that... The, the uh, answer is I can't answer yes or no. Okay. So you don't recall? I just said the answer is I can answer yes okay. or no. What, an, what is your answer to my I'll question? let you know. Okay, let's see. You still need more time to tell yes. me whether or not you read it or not? Yes, yes. In other words, you have to read the opinion to refresh your recollection? I'm not going to answer that question. Okay. Let's move on to the next question, Mr. O'Boyle. Um, you said also at the meeting that uh, Mr. Sweetapple's noncompliance with state statute chapter 119 for public records. Do you recall saying that, sir? Do you want to take a look at Exhibit 2? I remember that. Okay. And then you said he redacted portions of his bill, and anyone who knows anything about public records knows if you're going to redact, you have to tell under which exception, dot, dot, dot. Do you recall making that statement? Um, I don't recall making that exact statement, but I recall making a statement that would have been very similar to that, if not okay. that exact statement. And why did you believe I had redacted any of my bills? Because you did. Well, I did? How do you, what, on what basis do you believe I redacted any because of my bills? Because every time I asked for them over the town hall, they say, we're waiting for Mr. Sweetapple to redact them. Okay. And uh, that makes you believe I did the redactions? Well, unless they're all liars. Okay. Um, do you know whether or not I uh, instructed uh, the town's council to go ahead and redact rather than me when I was asked because I deemed it was the uh, town's attorney's decision as to what was a public record, not mine? It was your bill. I was told by the town that you were redacting it. That's what I relied on. So you made a public statement based on that that I was in non-compliance with the state statute because I had redacted portions of my bill, correct? I made the, the statement that I made best based upon uh, uh, good faith information that I received from A, your bill, and B, from the town. And who in the town told you that I was going to redact my bills? Uh, I believe it was Kelly Avery. Okay, and uh, did she tell you I had redacted them? I don't remember. Okay, and when was this conversation? I don't remember. Okay. Have you had any other conversations about my bill with the town? Yes. Okay. What other conversations have you had regarding my bills? Um, last week when Mr. Thrasher put his nose up against uh, the lens of my camera. Okay. And has anyone at Town Hall ever told you that I was involved in redacting my bills? Uh, Ms. Avery. Ms. Avery told you that I had redacted my bills or that I was going to? Um, I, I took it, I don't remember the exact words, but I took it as you were going to. Okay. Now you say, um, and why did you go to uh, the town of uh, Gulfstream on June 13, 2014 and make these statements about me? Uh, I don't know that I did go on June 13, 2014. Well, assuming that that's the date of the meeting that you're reading uh, from. 
I'm not reading from any meeting. Okay, well, I've handed you a copy of Exhibit 2. It's right here, sir. Uh huh. Why did you go to the town on that day and make those comments? Uh, because I, I thought the people in the town should realize what's going on in this town, how this town is being, in my words, raped. Okay. And so you thought I was part of some rape of the town? Um, I answered the question. Um, whether you were part of the rape, I don't really know. But you sure weren't giving away anything. And hmm? uh, you sure weren't giving away anything. Mr. Morgan, he sits up there and he preaches about how he defends these public records um, uh, suits. He doesn't defend him. You don't defend him. You're aggressively pr pursuing um, um, extraneous, um, 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 I guess, uh, lawsuits, motions, whatever you want to call it. I don't know what the uh, what the answer is, and I want uh, the people to know, and I wish I could get more people to know, and I wish I could get more people to listen, and I wish I could get more people to say we've had enough. Okay. And so you went there to that meeting. Did you know the meeting was televised when you went there? Televised. Did you know that the that the meeting strike that did you did you know the meeting was the media meeting videotaped? Yes, it was okay. video, it was two videotapes. Okay, and do you know if those videotapes play on any television stations? No, I do not. Okay. And so you you went to that meeting uh, for the purpose of uh, attacking me, you 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 called strike that. You see where you called me clearly a hotshot lawyer. Well, you are okay. And you went there knowing that that you you, you considered me a hotshot lawyer, but you went there to impugn me, right? No objection. Wasn't that your intent in making these statements to no. impugn me? No. And uh, didn't you do that uh, after I filed a motion to disqualify the O'Boyle law firm in this case? Within a week of my filing, strike that, within a week of your meeting with Mr. Ring regarding a motion that I had filed to disqualify your son's law firm. No, I would have done it anyway. Let me rephrase it for you. I'm not even sure there's a question. Okay. I'll rephrase it. I, I don't, I'm not sure if I flunked high school English or high school history. I think it was history, Both. but that was college, freshman year. I think it should have been English, though. I'll rephrase it. Um, do you recall that I filed uh, on behalf of the town a motion to disqualify your son's law firm alleging that it is not a bona fide interstate law firm? An absolute crime. Yes, I do. Okay. It was a crime? My I father. think it was a crime that you filed that. Yes, I do. Okay. And so you think I've committed a crime? I think you've committed a crime by filing that. Yes, sir. Okay. What crime? Do and Ms. O'Connor as well. What crime do you think I've committed? Well. I say the crime in a generic sense. I think there's a litigation, uh, what do you call it, uh, litigation privilege. So you can't be, it can't be a crime. But I think what you did to my son in my world, Marty O'Boyle's world, Marty O'Boyle's definition, I think it's a crime. Okay. And you've had your son appear on your behalf to represent you as a lawyer, haven't you, before Gulfstream? Sorry, you kind of tailed off at the end there, but Okay, let me... Uh, to Gulfstream, or? Yeah. You had a case in the town of Gulfstream, and you had your son appear on your behalf and file a memo where he indicated he was an attorney at law, didn't you? I know. Strike that? No. No? No. Yeah, I'm sorry, Bob. I actually have to use the restroom. All right, why don't we take a break? Thank you. Time is 11.01 a.m. We're going on.